Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to discuss what it's like to use a knife in a fight and how to fight someone with a knife. Um, we're going to go over common mistakes that and misunderstandings that people have of fighting with a knife. Please click on the lower right hand corner of your screen to subscribe. Click that top secret icon so that you do not miss out on any practical or tactical knowledge in the future. Having a knife in a fight is a strange proposition in and of itself. Obviously, you can cause a lot of damage with a knife. So when you're using a knife in a fight, you're going to want to be able to legally use it. And so that's going to require you to make sure that you are facing a a lethal threat or a deadly force threat. If you are against someone with also with a knife or with a gun or if he's larger than you or he has some other kind of weapon, these are all times where you would use either your pistol or you would use a knife or whatever is available to do great bodily harm up to and including death against that individual to protect yourself. Now that being said, just like with a firearm, you don't always know that you're going to have to deploy a weapon, a tool, actually. You have the weapon is here. But for, for the sake of argument, deploy this tool that we call a weapon. We may not have the time or opportunity to deploy it prior to us realizing that we need it. That being said, obviously, this is a tool used to facilitate the shutting down of the human body and of the human brain. So here we got standard folding knife. Blade is about three to four inches long. Check your local laws before you start carrying a knife. I recommend a folder simply because a fixed blade knife, which is, for those who don't know, a fixed blade is the blade is always out. And so that it goes into a sheath on your waist or in your ankle or whatever and I recommend a folder the reason why is simply because it is usually more legal in more places and it's easier to conceal but make sure it's locking so that the blade doesn't come back at you and cut you that way or who knows what else you're gonna do if you're using it as another tool you will have to use it to pry or gouge and doing that without a locking blade would, could cause great injury. So if you have an opportunity to deploy a, a tool such as a knife, a knife is something that you want to conceal until it's too late. You want to be able to conceal it so that the other person does not know you have it until it is inside of him. There's two ways to hold this and deploy this. One is to hold it down and use it in stabbing. And the other is to hold it out with the blade up, so to speak, or out. You can stab and you can slash. That's typically the two moves that you can do. Now, when you slash someone, you're cutting the, the skin the long way. And what happens is, is that it can, depending on where you cut, cause a lot of blood and a lot of bleeding. That can cause a panic in your attacker and as a result cause him to leave off the fight and panic and seek medical attention or what have you because he's afraid that he's going to bleed to death. The cutting has a psychological effect. However, the more important use of this tool is to use it as a stabbing implement. And the reason why is because that's what causes the damage to shut down the brain and the body. It can cause a lot of trauma, internal bleeding. It can cause uh, damage deep into the eye and into the brain itself using this, this blade. So while there's a great psychological effect to slashing a person, you almost never want to just slash a person. What you want to do is stab a person. Now when you have it deployed, you want to keep it a secret for as long as possible. 
So you have it firmly in your hand like this, but then you put it down by your side. You hold it down by your side against your leg so that it can't be seen by your attacker. And the same thing goes for if you're holding it like this, same thing. You hold it like this, no one really knows that it's there until you use it. And then maybe not even they know that it's there. So a common misconception about fighting someone with a knife is that we have to relearn how to fight. And the object and point of what I'm trying to say is, is that if I have this knife deployed properly, it's not seen until it's being used. So it's an act, actually a surprise to the attacker. But not only that, I have it firmly in my hand. I can still fight. I can still strike with elbows. I can strike with forearms and and I can even use my fists without actually stabbing anything. So another common misconception is we have to relearn how to fight if we're fighting against someone with a knife. If someone has a knife, whoa, we gotta jump back and we gotta do this fancy footwork like in the movies. The reality of the situation is, is that if you're not doing anything to stop this, it doesn't matter if he has one of these or if he has nothing or if he has a club, a taser, a machete, a sword, or a rifle, or a pistol. You get the idea. It makes no difference whatsoever. If you're not shutting this down, then you're still half, the, the, the battle still hasn't been even fought. You have to be able to shut down this. So you have to get to this. Well, how do you get to this when the guy is going like this all over the place? Well, obviously, when he is slashing, He's coming out like this. Well, there's an opening right there. So if you have to jump back temporarily, you jump back as he's slashing, and then you're coming in. And the nice thing about that is, if you are not squared off to him, but you are at an angle sideways, you can always step back and then step right in to into that guy while he's still holding the knife way out here. Another thing to remember is is that if he's slashing like this, he's afraid of you more than probably you're afraid of him. Simply because if he really knew how to use this, he would do as we said earlier, leave it as a surprise until the very end. So this is a show of force. If someone bears a knife at you, that's a show of force because they are trying to threaten you into compliance with whatever they want to do or what they want you to do. They don't necessarily know how to use this with the absolute intent of I'm going to murder you before you know what hit you. So then someone slashing like this, the movies tell you to jump back and you notice that a lot of times when they're jumping back they still get slashed. They cut their shirt, you know, it's drama of course. It's for effect. So the thing to remember is, if you keep on jumping back and you're just doing this little dance with the guy who's trying to slash you, you haven't done anything to cause an effect. You haven't done anything to stop that human machine, to shut him down, to stop the threat. So the key is to stop the threat. Another thing to remember, and this is, everybody says this, everybody who teaches knife fighting or teaches you how to take out an attacker with a knife says in a knife fight you're guaranteed to get cut so then why back jump back all scared why why try to avoid getting cut if you're going to get cut anyway if the chances are that you're going to get cut why not get cut taking them out and eliminating the threat so that you don't get stabbed believe me i would rather get slashed right across here or any place else that's not vital I'd rather get slashed with the tip of a knife than to get stabbed with the whole thing into my vital organs so that I bleed for real and cause real trauma and shut down. So if you're going to get cut anyway, well, take out the attacker. Don't sit here playing this dance and give him a chance to keep on cutting you and cutting you and cutting you. 
In a previous video, I demonstrate how to take out someone with a knife if he's trying to come at you and slash you. And I demonstrated that same technique with the club. Obviously, we are not retraining ourselves just because this comes into play. We do the same technique, whether it be a knife or club, or if it's just a punch. The fact of the matter is, is that a good self-protection system does not train you in one way if the guy's unarmed, and then train you in another way if he's holding a knife, and then train you in a totally different way if he's holding a bat, and train you in a different way if he's holding a rifle or a pistol. A good self-protection system says shut down that human machine so that the threat is eliminated. So if you're going to get cut anyway, move in and attack. Now obviously don't be stupid. When you see someone going like this, you move in. When you see him coming out like this at you, you don't move in right into the knife. You move around him like this or you move around him like this to get to the back side of him while he's slashing this way. The key to remember if you're fighting someone, if you have an attacker that is attacking you with a knife, if you get cut, don't worry about the cut. Stitches will take care of the cut. Worry about being stabbed and the surest way to not be stabbed is to take out the threat. Stop the attacker himself, not the knife. Don't try to wrestle him for the knife. Take him out. Create unconsciousness, create a real trauma injury, whether it be a broken bone that you can't shake off, obviously a broken bone, or an internal injury where you rupture organs. So I hope that clears up a little bit of the myth of fighting with a knife. Always look for a self-protection system that incorporates tools such as knives and clubs and guns, but at the same time, make sure that you understand that there doesn't have to be any different type of training. The training itself, whether it be unarmed or armed, should be universal based on principles. And that's how you learn to take out and fight against someone with a knife and fight with a knife.